Hey there, welcome to Neuropod, a channel covering all topics related to Elon Musk's brain interface company, Neuralink. My name is Ryan Tanaka, and this update episode is packed as I try to give you all the most important highlights. I'm gonna share how Neuralink got FDA breakthrough device designation for their third product application, their product that will help give a voice to those who have lost the ability to speak. Then I'll share a detailed look at Neuralink's electro threads and how they compare to former BCIs. I'll share a clip of an inspiring message directly from Neuralink's P3, Brad Smith, who's their first trial participant with ALS. Although he's unable to speak, Neuralink, paired with Grok, has given him the ability to communicate. Then Elon just posted about the surgical robot. We'll look at that alongside another post where he commented on a treatment showing promising results for advanced Parkinson's disease. Then we got an update from Neuralink's president, DJ Sa, on the specs of their second product, Blindsight, that should be implanted in humans before the end of the year. Then Neuralink's head of machine shop, Jim Cooney, went on a podcast where he shared how his career prepared him for his role at Neuralink. I'll share the highlights of the conversation so you don't have to listen to the whole thing, but if you want, the link is in the description. And then we'll finish it off with showing some progress from competitors. Neuralink has announced that yet again, they've received a breakthrough device designation from the FDA for their third product application. This device will help give a voice to those who are speech impaired or lost their ability to speak altogether. How incredible is that? The designation will help Neuralink get these implants into patients faster. Keep in mind Neuralink's first two products, Telepathy and Blindsight, got the same designation. This means the FDA will review submitted paperwork more quickly in addition to giving Neuralink a little more flexibility when designing their clinical trials. The first patient could be someone affected by ALS, stroke, cerebral palsy, or other neurological condition. Neuralink's president, DJ Sa, commented on X saying they hope to implant in the first patient for this product this summer. Even though they've gotten this designation before, we shouldn't take their hard work for granted. The potential to help people with unmet medical needs is inspirational and should be supported by everyone. In this video, Dave, a member of Neuralink's technical staff, compares the older, industry standard electrode probe versus what Neuralink is doing today. The amount of brain tissue damage is considerably different. While you watch this, please keep in mind he is showing an older type of brain computer interface. He is not showing Neuralink's electrode probes here. This figure does a nice job summarizing the key challenge that brain computer interfaces have faced today. In a nutshell, shortly after implantation, a mixture of microglia and astrocytes migrate to the probe surface and over the course of a few months mature into this sheath around the probe known as glial encapsulation, which is best appreciated in this horizontal view where you can see the glial cells wrapping the probe. Dave continues to explain that this image shows the brain tissue damage caused by a grid of microelectrodes. Again, this is not Neuralink's approach. This is the old school approach that uses this grid just stamped into the brain tissue. And what you can see from a mile away is this blue staining all around these holes where the array was previously located. And the blue is indicative of dense fibrotic scar tissue. However, I was shocked to find this is not the case. Now for comparison, the key metric to consider is what he discusses here. Neuralink's value is the 98% neuron retention you see in light blue. Incredibly, we're seeing approximately 98% neuron retention, which starkly contrasts the published value of 37%. This signifies the advantages of Neuralink's overall approach. The threads are incredibly thin and therefore go practically unnoticed by the brain. They're also made with materials that work well with the body for long-term use. And the robot inserts them into the brain quickly and precisely. So if you prefer keeping your neurons, I suggest you get a Neuralink brain interface not one of the old school ones. Brad Smith, the first person with ALS to get a Neuralink implant, broke the internet recently when he published a video on X sharing his story. Since you've probably seen the video, I'll include just a 30 second clip from the end where he shares an extremely heartwarming message. God loves me and my family. He has answered our prayers in unexpected ways. He has blessed my kids and our family. So I am learning to trust that God knows what he is doing. The big picture is, I am happy. 
Tiffany is the greatest person I've ever known, and I get to spend eternity with her. My kids are doing well, especially under the circumstances, and I can control the computer with telepathy. Life is good. Brad and his family have given me the privilege of visiting their home, and I've gotten to know his wife and kids, plus a better understanding of how daily life is with this horrible disease. For my more detailed interview episode with Brad, click here. I also want to highlight that in Brad's video and his book, Navigate the Straight, he shares he is a follower of Jesus Christ. I often see comments citing specific verses in the Bible claiming that Neuralink is to be avoided. Given that Nolan and Brad both follow this God while simultaneously advocating for and supporting Neuralink, maybe that's a good sign this technology is not evil. And regardless of whether you believe in Allah, Buddha, the Christian God, many different gods, or none at all, how can you not support the very tangible positive outcomes these people and these families are experiencing today? And also, I thought I'd share this fun clip from Ashley Vance, the day before Brad had his surgery. Oh, hey, Yuan. Hey, Jen. Hey, I want to introduce you to Brad and his family. Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Thanks, hi. For, thanks for taking the time to say hi to us. We're super excited about tomorrow. I hope this is a game changer for you and your family. I am so excited to get this in my head and stop using my gaze. <laughs> sounds, sounds good. This could really be... A, a really big difference. I don't know if you guys play video games with your dad and yeah. you know, otherwise have uh, some, some good times, you know? Yeah, they, they are excited for that potential to spend more time playing video games with dad. So, thank you so much. You're most welcome. Elon had a post go viral on X where he said, Robots will surpass good human surgeons within a few years and the best human surgeons within five years. Neuralink had to use a robot for the brain computer electrode insertion as it was impossible for a human to achieve the required speed and precision. It's remarkable to think about these robots performing physical tasks. Consider this, right now our LLM models can do many digital tasks. You prompt Grok or ChatGPT to write an email or generate an image, and voila, it's done in seconds. But now imagine prompting your robot to perform physical tasks. Say, hey, Tesla bot or Optimus, go wash the dishes or hey, test the Model Y, or Doge Rocket, go pick up my mom from the gym. Optimus, my friends are coming over at three. Please vacuum the living room and move the empty boxes out of the garage so they have space to park. Sure, these exact situations may take some time, but just like ChatGPT caused AI to take the world by storm, humanoid robotics is eventually going to perform physical labor tasks, just like we use LLM models now to perform digital labor tasks. Get ready to prompt your robot. And in the longer term, just send your thought directly between your bot and your brain. Elon also commented on this post. This man who was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease is temporarily relieved of his tremors after an infusion treatment therapy called Produadopa. Produadopa is a drug delivered continuously via a pump similar to insulin pumps used for people with diabetes. Next, in reference to Neuralink's second product, Blindsight, DJ shared, we're working on a 3K system that can read and write on every channel, aiming to be in humans by the end of the year. This aligns well from what we heard last July. The current device has uh, 64 threads with 16 electrodes uh, on each thread. Um, our next device has uh, 128 uh, threads with, with eight electrodes per, per thread. And then our next generation device will have uh, e maybe- Even more channels. Yeah. yeah. So, 3, yeah, so next device we're aiming for, yeah, uh, 3,000 channels. Neuralink's head of Machine Shop, Jim Cooney, was interviewed on the Machine Shop Mastery podcast. He shares the twists and turns of his career, including working at Tesla during the infamous production hell in 2018, to stories of his early Machine Shop days where he was surrounded by old school guys in rough and tough environments. Before I share a clip of how the machine shop team is distributed at Neuralink, the primary thing I took away was that this is the type of talent at Neuralink. It's full of folks who have a wealth of experience while maintaining a sense of urgency and an excellent work ethic. Who do you want building your brain chip? How many uh, machines and people in both of these shops combined? There's eight people on the team now. We're looking to grow again this year, so I have five yeah, five in California and three in Texas. 
Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the growth is going to be focused here in Texas. So we're going to start growing Texas and Fremont will probably stay at the same size indefinitely. And then we'll just keep ramping up Texas. So Texas will be the mothership. Right. And then California will kind of be like our skunky R&D facility, I think. I Mm -hmm. I think that's the way we're going to go. And one other thing. I found it's unfortunate the trades get such little love today. Welders, plumbers, electricians are in high demand, and the pay is rising. But not a lot of kids coming out of high school even considered doing what Jim did. He started off working at a small little shop while in high school. He wasn't really thinking any of the trades were options. It is kind of scary for young people if you don't really have, like, you don't really know what options are out there. I know for me, it was just like that was the path. You go to school, high school, then you go to college, and then you become whatever. Uh, there yeah. wasn't manufacturing just wasn't a thing it wasn't like oh you're going to be a plumber you're going to be like a machinist or a tool maker none of that like, i didn't even know what machining or tool making was until sure. way later yeah that that shop those guys those guys were tough those guys were super super tough you know like if i made a mistake you know you get a part kind of thrown kind of by you are you serious oh yeah that's a harsh yeah. environment yeah, it was full blast. He added in the episode, he's proud of the team culture at Neuralink. So if you're interested in joining, check out open positions at the careers page on the company website. Okay, before we get to the competitors, I figured I'd share this bonus section. On Tessa's earnings call, Elon announced he's going to be spending fewer hours working on the Department of Government Efficiency. Starting probably in next month, May, my time allocation to Doge will drop significantly. I'll have to continue doing it for... I think we have deployed the remainder of the president's term. So as Tesla investors concluded, he'll spend more time dedicated to Tesla. If you follow that same logic, he'll spend more time at Neuralink as well, which would only accelerate progress of making these devices more and more capable. Whether it's at Tesla or Neuralink or his other companies, Elon spends nearly all his time trying to help others. Now you may agree or disagree with his approach, but it is crystal clear he will work extremely hard to fight for what he believes in. How much do you sleep in a given night? Uh, about six hours on average. So the next question is, how many hours do you work a day? I work almost every waking hour. And the other waking hours when he's not working, he's not vacationing. He's spending time with his kids, several of which are shared with Siobhan, who gave this extra insight into the dedication he has. Certainly trends well below six hours during intense periods, but 100% on the rest. There are zero days where he isn't working a considerable amount even the rare day theoretically intended for relaxation. Another company named Axoft has completed FDA clinical trials in four patients in Panama City. Their approach has some similarities to Neuralink in that it requires surgically opening the skull for implantation of these soft probes into the brain. They call this material fluoron, and the key point they highlight is that this material is soft and flexible, which they expect will help with reduced scarring of the brain tissue and better compatibility with the body. According to their company website, Axoft's bio-inspired scalable implant promotes long-term communication with the nervous system, transforming clinical outcomes, individual health, and the human experience. The company was started in 2021, and the three co-founders are Harvard PhDs, one of which is a professor. Then there was also this press release from Precision Neuroscience, the invasive BCI company that's working on similar goals as Neuralink, and that was started by a few former Neuralink employees. Precision Neuroscience is proud to announce that we have received 510K clearance from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, for the Layer 7 cortical interface, our high-resolution cortical electrode array, for use in the recording, monitoring, and stimulation of electrical activity on the surface of the brain. This is the first regulatory clearance granted to a company developing a next-generation wireless brain-computer interface and marks a pivotal step towards delivering immediate value for patients and neurosurgical teams, enabling real-time neural recording. And the rest of the announcement says their device has been tested in 35 patients. This clearance allows their array to remain implanted for up to 30 days. So this brain-computer interface industry is still in its early innings. There are bound to be more companies entering the space in the next decade, and I look forward to seeing that progress. Anyway, that's that. YouTube thinks you'll like this video, so click it. And if you made it to the end, subscribe for more Neuralink videos. Thanks for watching.